have been adequate. They have been, in my mind, full throated. They have been accurate. They have been as detailed as I could make them. Uh, now, whether or not you wish to uh, move to disqualify me, uh, that that is your choice. But the time period has frankly passed. Uh, motion to disqualify me at this point, based on the disclosures that I've made, would be untimely. And so, what that means, sir, is that I'm going to stay on this case, which means over the course of the next few days and weeks, uh, I'm going to review the great number of motions that you have filed, and I'm going to begin setting those for hearings. So stay close to your email, because you'll be receiving emails uh, that will be having, that will be to you, either to Mr. Mansfield. Mr. Mansfield, are you directly prosecuting this case? Are you the lead prosecutor? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. My judicial assistant, I will instruct her. She will, she will upon me reviewing these motions and trying to determine how much time is needed, uh, if it's something short that maybe I have a question about before we set it, we'll set it for a short hearing. But it is more likely that these, these motions, based on my very brief review, are a little bit more substantive in nature. They're going to require us to take some time. Mr. Tucker, I'm aware that you've been appearing via Zoom, that you may wish to travel in order to litigate these motions, meaning you may wish to be here in Marathon, Florida for open court. Again, you may wish to be, um, and I may order that you be here, depending upon the nature of the motions. You have to understand, sir, up until now, I have purposely not made any rulings in any portion of your case because I wanted to get past this issue of either my recusal or your request or motion to disqualify. It seems as though we are past that. Now action will begin from my perspective on your case. Do you understand that? Again, it would make sense for us to basically carve out an entire day where uh, Mr. Mansfield can plan a trip up here and be here, you do your trip here, and we all be in person. We take one full day to litigate the matters, and then we could have um, resolution, perhaps, um, on some or all of them. Okay? So, just again, like I said, I'm staying on the case. I do not believe, based on all of the research that I've done, that I'm required to recuse myself. I have clearly said that I believe it is my duty to make those disclosures. I've made them as clear as I can. And so stand by, be checking your email because over the course of the next two weeks or so, you will be receiving communications from my judicial assistant indicating to you Judge, the motions I filed were all electronically filed. I, I believe his email is in uh, assigned to this case. So I don't know why emails would not have gone out to him when we electronically file things. The attorney of record for the opposing side is emailed. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why he wouldn't have gotten them. But uh, and Judge, there's one motion in particular. I think I think both sides want transcripts from the trial. And I'm concerned that that's a lengthy process. Um, if your honor, you know, I don't think there's going to be any opposition from either party to get those started. So if, if your honor is inclined, we could at least, you know, you could maybe make a ruling from chambers on that and we could get that process started. Cause I, I think that's going to be a big, a, a big chunk of time before, uh, we can get those in. Okay. If you recall the last. Well, 
So for the both of you, um, if you recall, the first time I called this case, we had talked about five or six different issues. Uh, one of those was these transcripts, and I'd asked Mr. Mansfield if he was aware of any authority or any anything at all that said that um, the, the clerk of court or the court reporters were required to give a transcript or to make a transcript. You see, I've been told they don't have a transcript. I've been told they have all of the recordings. I've been told they will gladly provide to both of you the same recordings and that you can use the resources within the state, uh, you know, the state attorney's office or however you get that done. And that Mr. Tucker can use whatever resources he has to get that done uh, to create transcripts of the original proceedings. And uh, I'm sympathetic in some ways. I understand that you would want the transcripts, um, but I, I'm not so sure the clerk of court is required to make transcripts unless the case is on appeal. And, and we were being a remedy to request them from the court admin. Okay. Folks, I, I, I know, I look, I respect, I, I, I understand. I understand precisely why you want them. I understand. I have no problem right this moment, ordering, uh, you know, court admin or figuring out a way to, for both of you to have equal access to, to obtain copies of all trial proceedings. I have no issues with that. Um, but again, I've only been told that they don't have transcripts. This isn't something that, not like we have transcripts that are sitting on someone's desk waiting and we're just not giving them to anyone. That's a product that would have to be created. And I, when I learned of that information, I just thought to myself, well, I'm not aware of a rule that that requires any transcript to be made of a mistrial. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to know if there was some authority or precedent for this. That that was all. I haven't been presented that. So you all be thinking about that. I have so much to do. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Ransfield. No, I was just going to say, and I, 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 I couldn't find an actual authority that addressed these particular facts. I mean, everything I found was obviously on, when it's up for a direct appeal. So um, that's fine. If we get audio, then we will find, you know, we will find a way to get them transcribed. I do want to, my assistant just popped in and she wants to confirm defense's email address to make sure that we have the right one. So, Mr. Okay. Tucker, if you can give us your email address, we can confirm it. T Y S T Y E S. All right. Okay. That's all right. Ties life seven four seven at gmail dot com. You want to address the uh, order? No, see. no, I don't have this problem yet. Okay. Play seven four seven at gmail. Yeah, that's the email that's in there. So I, I don't know why. I don't know. I, I can't answer why you're not getting them, but we'll get them to you. All right. Well, um, anyway, this was supposed to be just a short hearing to let you know that work will begin on myself reviewing the uh, motions again. The time has expired for the defendant to move to disqualify the court and the sitting judge. So he's not set for any other court date. So, um, Mr. Tucker, I'm going to share on my screen the dates that I have coming up for all felony matters. Um,
Let's see if that shows up. Okay, you can see there in report it does show up. And so it should be on your screen now. So here's what I have. So you let, let's recall, here's what we have. We have uh, pursuant to those uh, rules of criminal procedure, the court was required within a certain time period to conduct the retrial of your case. I asked you several questions about that. You've affirmatively waived any quote unquote speedy trial obligation or rule or constraint. You affirmatively had requested a continuance. You had indicated that you wish to engage in some motion practice. Uh, of course, you both wish to uh, obtain transcripts and there's still some, uh, but oh, poten potentially more than I, I had predicted litigation that's going to occur between now and the retrial. So we had indicated that it is more likely that this case will be tried in the second half of 2024, but it is my goal. And I'm set, I, I wanted to let you all know of the date that I have penciled this case in for now so that you can advise me as to whether or not these dates work. I've just completed my calendar and I have set aside Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. But I'm, I'm looking at a different calendar right now that I'm not sharing. Um, I wanted to at least gauge your availability for trial in September of 2024. Now, likely trial would occur uh, between September 9th through the 20th. So that would be a 10 day trial period. And my hope would be to pick the jury the week before at some point. So we would actually meaningfully start trial on, on Monday, September 9th. Um, I at least wanted you all to know that those that's that's a time period that I had identified. I can move a few things around to do another thing. But Mr. Mansfield, if you have any input, looking at your calendar, it's gonna be trial starting sometime that that first week of September, but the, the substantive portion of the trial would begin on September 9th and go through the 20th. Do you have any sense as to whether or not those dates would work for the state? Judge, they'll work. I was just, is there anything sooner than that, that the court would be able to accommodate something earlier than September? Well, maybe let's, let's ask Mr. Tucker, Mr. Tucker, if I were to set this case for trial in August, uh, would you be prepared? Sir, don't you worry about time. I assure you that I will be here just as long as I'm needed for trial. Uh, Mr. Mansfield, I, I, I could potentially have some availability in August. Uh, I do have some try. I do have some dates that I can move around, um, but um, 
I, I, I wouldn't say I completely agree with Mr. Tucker, but I will say that there are a number of issues that we need to iron out. I, you know, transcripts being the first one, those are going to take several weeks. Even if you were to get the audio, uh, you know, this week or next, I mean, there, that's going to take three or four weeks at a minimum to get transcripts. That's probably, and that was what, you know, 13, 14 days of trial. Well, Mr. Tucker, I'm here to tell you that absent some extraordinary issue, we will not be trying this case after September. Okay. Uh, I've, I've proposed what I think is a reasonable amount of time based up upon what you relayed to me. Uh, my Judge, are we are we going to re are, are we going to rehash the trial at this moment in time? Because uh, th there's a lot the state could say on this issue as well. But I didn't think Your Honor wanted to get into this today. Okay, Mr. Tucker, I'm here to tell you. Yeah, for, for now, yeah, for now, I'm I'm going to go ahead and set I'm going to go ahead and set some trial dates uh, because that will make sure everyone knows what to expect. We can move the trial up if needed. We can move it sooner if we've resolved all these issues. But for now, I need to move a couple things uh, around. Um, what I would like to do. Um, Mr. Mansfield, how long did Wadir, uh, yes. the first time around, did were you able to conduct Wadir and jury selection in two days? Three days, Judge. It took three days the first time around. Okay. It took three days, Judge. Okay. Well, what I would like to do is... Uh, we can start jury selection on Thursday, September 5th, and potentially complete jury selection Thursday and Friday. Yes, sir. And, um, Judge, I think, I think. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. That'll work. That, that's fine with us, Judge. I mean, it, as, as far as the pretrial motions, I. I would ask the court to set up maybe a motion deadline so we can have, you know, oh. a line where everything gets filed before. And we also have an emergency. Yes, I'm, I'm about to do that. I'm about to do a number of dates okay. right now. This was supposed to be okay. a short hearing where I told you I'm staying on the case in light of the research that I've okay. done. I've only come to that conclusion. And second was to set a bunch of dates. I recognize that, um, okay. um, you know, I've left this. September date a little soft, but I'm not going to do that. I, I'm going to set this case for trial in September on September 5th. September 5th and 6th, that's a Thursday, Friday. That's going to be jury selection. I would like to hope that we can complete jury selection before we leave on Friday um, and, and start fresh on Monday morning with instructions and um, with, you know, basic instructions and opening statements. But if we need to continue on into Monday, I, I think that would be fine as well. Um, I have blocked off until September 20th. I don't have any hearings. Um, if we need the following week, I, I can get, I think I can get coverage for that following week. If we need three, you know, up to three and a half weeks. Um, you see, I think that date works good. Um, but, 
I want you to I want you to put that down, sir, and make sure that you're aware that that's what I'm expecting trial will be. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to reset and rather put this case on for a pre-trial hearing in May. Okay, so the next date I set, and I'm going to go chronologically forward, is. Oh, darn, I have a separate homicide case um, next month, so we, we, we can't do a date I was thinking of. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this case on for a pretrial hearing on June 17th at 1.30, okay? That's going to be June 17th at 1.30. That's going to be for a pretrial hearing between... Now and then, I should have a, a handle on all the motions. Again, that's just going to keep track of the case going forward. Again, what I'm going to leave open today is when these various motions are going to be set. I need to read them. I need to assess how much time or what witnesses, at least I believe, uh, will be called. Look for an email from my judicial assistant because she may be asking you all these questions. Please advise you know, how much time Steve needs, how much time the defense needs on this motion. So we can hopefully uh, put everything together. Um, Judge Trial and Key, what's the trial of Marathon? Oh, I just was curious. Are, are we going to try it in Key West or try it in Marathon, Judge? It's, I'm just inquiring I'm, what your plan is. I'm trying to work on that right now. I don't have an okay. answer. The plan is for Key West. The plan is for Key West. The plan would be to do all pre-trial litigation here in Marathon, and the trial would occur in Key West. Okay. We're just going to have a much larger jury pool to, to pick from. And, uh, you know, Yeah, well, this one was set for a special hearing. You will never use this code again because of the docket that your case will never be on. I only set it on this date because I knew I'd have an extra 10, 15 minutes to address a couple of issues in your case. And I wanted to do it sooner rather than later. Um, and uh, well, do you have in front of you the this meeting ID, the one that is 936-5202? Always going to be the meeting code that starts with 936 and ends in 933 going forward. All right. So um, next time we'll see each other for sure. We'll be on June 17th at 1.30 and be uh, looking out for emails from my judicial assistant so that we can begin scheduling some of these hearings. All right, that's all I have. Court will be at recess. Thanks, Roger.